up beautiful people welcome back to my channel i'm erin and this is erin on demand a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand your business and your impact and y'all today we got a good one we are talking all about personal branding and how to create a strong personal brand now these ain't your average personal branding tips i know everyone talks about niching and finding your tribe and um picking colors and what colors evoke and, you know, taking great images and pictures and all that stuff. But even though that's true, that's totally true, it's very important in personal branding, but that's not the only thing. We've kind of made personal branding synonymous with what you put on social media about yourself and it's not just that, okay? So the first thing I wanna make note of is that whether or not you're trying to have a personal brand, you have one, okay? and all the personal brand is, is what people perceive of you based on what they know about you. So your personal brand is not just social media, it's how you interact with people in person, it's how you do business, it is how um, all of that works together in one community, in one kind of ecosystem that creates your overall personal brand. So yes, social media is an aspect of that, but it is not the end all be all. And you can still create a strong personal brand without social media. So um, this video is going to be primarily some awesome tips to create and build a strong personal brand on and off social media so that you can have a brand that creates impact or that builds your business or that just um, achieves whatever goals you have for your own personal brand. Now, one of the best things that you can do and start doing immediately is writing down your core values. And these aren't just things that you want people to receive from your content. These are not tangible things. These are feelings you want to evoke from your audience or potential audience um, through your brand. So these are three words that I chose for my brand, which are real. I want people to feel that I just keep it real. I want you to feel like I am a real person, um, that you can relate to me and that, um, you know, I'm just like anybody else. That's why in my day in the life videos, you'll see me with no makeup. Just like how I talk off camera is how I talk to y'all on camera. Um, I just keep it real. And I want my information to come across as genuine and real. So real is definitely one of my main values. Second top value that I have is inviting. So I want people to feel like they are welcomed, whether that's through the camera, whether I run into a subscriber at the mall, like I just did a couple of days ago. She was ringing me up um, at the store from some, for some clothes and literally like, she was like, oh my gosh, like I am a subscriber, I really love you. And I just always want people to feel like they are invited into my space, whether that's online or in person. And even when I conduct business, being inviting is something that I am just, you know, I give hugs. I'm just, that's me. So inviting is a huge value of mine. And then the third value, valuable. <laughs> okay. So I always want to offer value to people, even for free. Like on YouTube, I like to give value. On Instagram, I like to give value. In my stories, Instagram stories, I like to give value. In person, if people ask me questions or, you know, whatever, I'm always trying to give as much value as I can. Even in my business, I try to give people as much bang for their buck um, as they can. So I always achieve to over deliver, which is super, super important to me. So my three values, real, inviting, and valuable. So start by picking three words that you want your audience to feel and you need to funnel every piece of content, every interaction through those values. That needs to be a living, breathing part of you because your personal brand ultimately is about what is important to you and how that is important to your audience. The next thing that you should do in growing your personal brand is pick two social media platforms max to really put your energy into. So in my eBrand club, which is my membership club for entrepreneurs or content creators looking to build their brand and business, I did a full hour long lesson on which platforms should you be on, but I will give you a quick tip that I share it with my club, pick two main social media platforms to channel your energy into. What you wanna do is you wanna pick 
one platform that is more long form. So it's long form content where you can add value. So that might be YouTube videos, that may be podcasting, that may be long form Facebook videos, blog posts. So pick one platform that adds high value. Then a secondary platform that adds high engagement. So this is where you engage heavily with your, um, your followers and you begin building those relationships. And that is like the perfect duo. So this might be Twitter. You may love to tweet and you might have a way with words or super witty. And so you might, and you might be great on camera. So maybe um, you have YouTube as more of your long form content and then you have Twitter as your secondary content and you kind of tag team the two platforms and it just kind of creates this really clean ecosystem. You're not pushing people to Instagram and to, and to Facebook and to YouTube and to podcasts. You give them two main places to live and to really build those communities. So I find that that's a really, really great way to brand yourself personally is not trying to focus on so many social media platforms, not trying to grow all of your platforms, but really um, zeroing in on two platforms that are really going to help you build your audience where where one offers high value, the other offers high engagement and strong relationship building. Bam. The next thing is to be clear and to be consistent. Now, what I find a lot of entrepreneurs have an issue with is being clear in what they do um, the services they offer, who they're offering those services to, and how they help that person. A lot of people don't even know how to explain their business in a very short and sweet way, which is super, super important. So the first thing is being clear on the purpose of your brand. The second part to that is being consistent. Repetition is key. Now this is where those graphics and colors and those things can come into play, where you're constantly putting out content and it's like a certain format, that is great branding. People can recognize um, you from those colors. They know automatically that this is an Erin video because I know what her thumbnails look like or I know whatever, that this is her color. That is a great you know, aspect of personal branding and you should be consistent in the way that you present yourself graphically. But also it's important to be consistent in the way that you present yourself personally. And I have dealt with businesses where their social media looks amazing. They, you know, they make themselves out to be this popping, you know, entrepreneur or hustler or side hustler or whatever. And then I try to support and I order something and the customer service is terrible or, you know, I don't get my order in X amount of time or, you know, it's just the personal brand doesn't carry all the way through to the end of my transaction. And so you always want to make sure that you are consistent with your brand, not just graphically and on social media and through your colors and your 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 graphic branding, but also through your human interactions, your customer service. Um, that is very, very important that these core values don't just live on social media, but they live in your day-to-day -day life. Now let's talk about quality over quantity. It is so important, you guys, to have quality supporters than a lot of non-quality supporters. A lot of people get really caught up in vanity metrics. You want a certain amount of followers or a certain amount of subscribers. And I know one of my goals for the end of the year is to get 50,000 subscribers, but I understand that it is not just about the subscribers that matters. It's about having loyal, loyal supporters. There is a concept called the 1000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly and basically he breaks down how all you need to really make a living is a thousand true fans. So if you are selling, um, like my eBrand Club for example, it is $20 a month. If there were a thousand people in that club, that would be $20,000 a month. All you need is 1,000 loyal subscribers, those people who ride for you, who are first to comment on your videos, who are first to buy something from you. You don't need to focus so much on having more people. You just need to focus way more on having more quality people and building the followers that you have into those people who want to you know, be super loyal to you. The next tip in building your personal brand is not to just talk the walk, 
<laughs> not to just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. And I think that this is probably the most challenging thing for people nowadays because social media has given us a way to push out our personal brands, even if it's not something that we truly believe in or, you know, is authentically us. So there are a lot of people perpetrating out here and putting out personal brands and trying to get the audience, their audiences to perceive a certain thing about them when that's not actually how they are. Okay. Let me know if you done dealt with some of that before, because mm, Anyway, if you cannot send a follow-up email, if you cannot um, have great customer service, if you cannot truly come through the way that you make yourself out to on social media, then that is not your personal brand, boo-boo. Um, and you can really, really tarnish your brand and your reputation if you don't follow through with the image that you are creating for yourself on social media. The next thing you need to do is know your audience. Like this is so important because even though this is your personal brand and these are things that are valuable to you, um, you're still trying to, you know, attract a certain type of person. So you need to know what that type of person looks like. If you are super into traveling and your brand is like all about traveling to little known places, so not like super touristy places, but you're, you want to travel to places that nobody really goes to, um, your target audience is probably going to be some really avid travelers. And so you want to make sure that the content that you're putting out talks to them. Why is my computer turning on? A big part of this is really knowing yourself before you pick an audience that you want to cater to because you want to know like, who am I and what is it that I want the world to know before you start picking who you're targeting because you don't want to lose yourself and your sense of authenticity because you're trying so hard to appeal to this specific demographic. So a lot of it is going to be those core values that set you apart from other people who are in that niche or doing those things um, or who have a similar personal brand to you. So um, a big thing is knowing your audience, but know yourself before you start trying to handpick the audience that you're trying to attract. Last thing is to just be yourself, hunty. You got to just be yourself and really um, not focus so much on all of the little things. I think in branding, the little things are your logo, your colors, um, all of those things. They are very important, but they're not as important as your authenticity, your core values, the information that you're giving to people. Um, you know, how you want people to feel, how you tell better stories and, and get your impact to more people. Um, the little things that you can change and, you know, switch up are your logo, your name. Like those are things that you honestly can change and rebrand, but who you are and the message that you want to give to the world is not something that you can just constantly change. The only way that creating a personal brand is constantly gonna be fun and enjoyable is if it truly depicts who you are. It can become very tiresome to create these videos and to post certain types of pictures on Instagram and to put on this facade online when that's not who you are in person and honestly when people do meet you in person it can be a huge letdown because they're expecting you to be a certain way just make sure that everything is aligned and that who you are is at the forefront of what your brand is and what how you shape your personal brand to be yes it can be you know one aspect of you maybe you love to travel and you love to cook and you love fashion but you want your personal brand to focus more on traveling because you want to come out with a travel bag someday and or you want to curate trips for people and you know that's the thing that you focus on that's totally fine but make sure that that is genuine and that it's not something that's forced so there we go those are my personal branding tips and if you want more tips on branding, building your business, you are welcome to subscribe, one, and two, to join my eBrand Club. It is an awesome community for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to really take their brand and their business to the next level. We have great masterclasses. 
Um, we have weekly live lessons. I do social media audits. Um, we have great discussions. So it's just a great encouraging group full of content and information. So if you're interested in that, I will link it in the description box below. And on that note, I hope you guys have a beautiful day, week, night, whenever you are watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.